The following podcast is not affiliated with the developers who have created the games being reviewed. The reviews are solely the opinions of the hosts to be used to make an educated decision on what games to download and play. Hello gamers and welcome to Budget Arcade, the number one free-to-play gaming podcast in the world. I'm Scott. My name is Jeff. I'm Elliot because uh, Mark is busy living his life and Scott asked me about four hours ago and I said, sure, Scott, anything for you. Yeah. I miss, I miss doing podcasts. I don't do enough of them. You do so, one. That's right. Well, <laughs> I might be doing a couple more. Uh-huh. Yeah, I got some news. I got some news. When I get to plug my stuff at the end, I got some news. Oh, okay. I'm I'm very excited. What do they call that? A little sizzle? You got a sizzle. Yeah, sizzle. Yeah. Mm. Okay. You're starting to sound like me. I got these podcasts in the oven, man. (laughs) Oven, huh? Okay. And just to recap, we play a free-to-play game every other week, and then we rate and review it. Elliot, what was this week's game? So this week, we played Killer Instinct, and it's technically the third Killer Instinct, by the way, in case you're like uh, curious. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second one was Killer Instinct Gold? Uh, I believe two. Okay, what there was a Killer Instinct. Was that 64? Yes. So, okay. there, well, there's also an SNES one. It, well, the SNES confused. one was the one I played the most. Yeah. I, yeah, was he on me too. SNES and Genesis at the time? No, because it's a Nintendo property at the time. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, so anyway, Killer Instinct's a fighting game. Uh, it's the third in the series. It's developed by this one. is developed by Helix Games, or excuse me, Double Helix Games. Ooh. Um, and this one is also published by Microsoft Studios, which, again, we just mentioned they were all kind of published by somebody different. Um, it was released as a free-to-play game... Um, on the Xbox One as a launch game in 2013. Uh, the game is a reboot of the series, uh, and this game also has a couple of seasons to it. Um, the first season was the original game that came out. There was a second season where characters were released between uh, 2014 and 2015. There was a third season and a port to PC, Windows 10, um, in 2016. So kind of a lot to this game because it... Um, the thing I, I started looking at when I was reading about this, the thing that's really interesting is if we had reviewed this in 2013, I don't think we would have liked it uh, as much as we might have liked it now, or not liked it, depending on how you guys feel about it. But it's it sounds like it's a completely different game from 2013 to 2016. I think oh, Scott so, played it back then, because I did um, Was it? I don't know if it was in 2013. I want to say I picked it up maybe two years ago, okay. so everything to be honest. Out by then. Yeah, it, it had been updated pretty heavily by then. I think I actually picked it up shortly after they had released um, one of the Battletoads as one of the playable characters. Okay. I remember the Battletoads thing making the news, and I was like interested because Battletoads, and that was the end of my interest. I never like went Yeah, it's it. weird It's that Battletoads is just associated with uh, Xbox now. Like when they did... Uh, the Shovel Knight exclusive characters for each console. Right, yeah. Xbox got the Battletoads, which I'm fine with. I like a good Ninja Turtle ripoff. But... I love a good Battletoads, yeah. Now, now the Battletoads that they brought to Xbox, was that an exclusive Xbox game, or was it on other stuff as well? A PC, yeah. for sure. Microsoft is interesting because they don't mind certain exclusives kind of finding their way. It looks like mostly with Nintendo. Yeah, the, yeah, because Nintendo, I bet, I don't think they view Nintendo as a threat like they view Sony as a threat. Yeah, I don't even and, and know if they view not even the Sony right as a threat anymore. Like, well, but yeah, well, I don't think they're competing. Right now, right? I, I don't think that Nintendo is competing in the same way. Right. Like, if you like, if you own a Switch, 
you probably own a PS, a PlayStation four or five or an Xbox yeah, one yeah, or slash yeah, series. Sure, right. Uh, but usually you don't own both at least early on in the console cycle, both consoles of the yeah. big ones, right? Cause they're expensive and they do pretty much the same thing to varying degrees. So gameplay. Well, since we're in gameplay, I'm assuming, uh, before we talk about the game, I want to talk about the graphics. Cause you said this is an Xbox one launch title. And as right. I'm playing it, it looks like a 360 title to me. Graphically, yeah. it does not pop. There's not really great lighting. It looks like a 360 fighting game to me. Um, and it's kind of hard to put your finger on because the difference between 360 and one isn't a huge jump. It's largely like lighting. And, you know, nowadays when you play a modern fighting game, you can see the light passing through the skin and like it's just all the super detail. But I, I swear this is just like maybe was initially built for the 360 and then it was like well we got this console coming let's just wait yeah it's like pokemon sword and shield on the switch it's clearly a 3ds game upgraded you're you're absolutely right i, I kind of thought that as well um just with like how even the backgrounds look you know on the maps they just kind of look they look very old school and not necessarily like in a bad way because I'm kind of used to that look, but it definitely feels like that. Yeah. Graphics don't mean much to me that nowadays it's like we've hit a point where looking better isn't going to make a better game. I don't think having bigger hardware now makes better games. So it's really just a. but when you get a brand new console, that's the thing you want to look at, right? Always. Yeah. yeah, it's like, well, what can it do? And when you install, you know, the free game, which you probably tried because the early Xbox One days were pretty barren, uh, you might have been like, oh, <laughs> disappointed. And especially when the PlayStation was, you know, dropping incredible looking games on launch day, you know, so. I don't know. Well, from what Elliot said, everybody was disappointed in the beginning of this game. Yeah, it sounds like people were really disappointed with the lack of content for yeah. for a free to play game back then, which I totally understand. I don't know how I know your guys' play experience was probably a little different than mine. I kind of rushed to play a lot of this game today. Again, only because Scott had asked me at like, you know, the last morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, Yeah, yeah, I'll download it and play. And so first off, it's like forty three gigs. Not only back. that, now you downloaded it on Xbox, right? Yes. So I started the download and I turned the Xbox off and I went out my day. Then I turned it back on and I'm like, oh, it's done. But there were so many notifications yes. of all the DLC that yes. was like uh, Glacier is downloaded or I don't know all the characters names, but it, like every character had a download notification and it was just it kept going even when I was booting into the game. It was kind of hilarious. My son was saying something about that, too, because I actually had to re-download the game. And he was like, oh, we're getting notifications of all these games being downloaded. And I'm like, no, it's just probably just one game and all the updates for it. It's like, so I downloaded it. I hit it in the download, and it was like, you have 60-something things in queue. Yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> I had to go check because it scared me a little bit. But all right, so gameplay-wise, this is a two, 1v1 fighting game. Uh, if you've played Killer Instinct, which I have very limited, like I mostly just got destroyed by my friend Ryan when I was a kid. Scott. Oh, yeah. Ryan was talking insane. About. And, and so it kind of was like, I don't like this game because it was one of those things. It's a combo based fighter and it takes combos as its core mechanic. Right. Uh, you know, Street Fighter wasn't so much about combos then. And even now they're kind of brief. And uh, your Mortal Kombat was all about the violence and their way to be different in the market was to have these insanely long combos uh, that they call ultra combos. And that holds true to this one. And one thing that they've carried over is the amazing announcer. <laughs> and yeah, it sounds exactly the same. Yeah, I wonder you, if it's the same guy. I don't think when I was in the arcade and I still I was a teching guy 
you know, I know I believe Scott would consider himself one as well. Yeah, Tekken I or would, Soul Calibur. Yeah, I'm a yeah. Namco fighter. What about you, Elliot? I was a big Soul Calibur guy, huge Soul Calibur guy, actually. Um, Who was your character? Well, if I was playing on like the Xbox, it was typically like the original Xbox. Spawn? I think it was Spawn, Spawn right? Hell yeah, um, Spawn was the man the on that game, game. But the GameCube one had Link, which was so cool. It that it outsold despite it being the third place console yeah. as far as install base. It outsold the other platforms because it had Link. Um, so I played a lot of Spawn, or I would play Link, like because my friend had a GameCube, I had an Xbox, so I usually played like. The, the system, you know, agnostic one. Um, or then, like, in the next version, it was um, Vader Yoda. and Yoda, which was yeah. fantastic. Yoda, um, the cheap little bastard. So I really enjoyed the Soul Calibur stuff. Other than that, I was a, I'm was a big, like, Smash Brothers guy, but that's yeah. like, about where my fighting games kind of stop. You know, I'll play a Tekken or um, Marvel vs. Capcom or Guilty Gear or... Like, I'll play that stuff, like, here and there, but they're, like, party games to me, right? You're playing them, there's, like, ten people over, you're all taking turns, you know, you're playing until, like, you lose, and then somebody takes yeah. your controller. Yeah, and know, that's, that's, that's really fun, cool. especially when nobody knows how to play, right? Yeah, yeah. A- or everyone's at a reasonable skill level. Um, but, uh, yeah, when you get one guy who's just, like, skunking people... <laughs> <laughs> but so this game, like I said, it's a combo based thing. So once you hit, I believe, 64, uh-huh. at least on the initial one, which coincided with this being really sort of the uh, tech demo almost for what the Nintendo 64 could do, uh, would you would get an ultra combo and the announcer would yell ultra combo. And if Scott wants to get fancy, he could edit, edit it in right there. I uh, could. You could. Or I could go ultra combo. Oh, That's you should edit it in though. You could edit yeah. it or combo breaker. Uh, <laughs> combo, combo breaker. breaker. Combo breaker. And so you would have combo breakers. And I don't remember how it worked on the original one, but on this, it's like you have a limited number of combo breakers. Yeah, and you can I, get more by getting hit or something. Right? I, you can like earn more as you're playing. Kind there's of something. Match. And we'll have to get over the paywall for me to get into the the, the other parts of it. But um, uh, so this is a six button fighter. And so it's going to be closer to your street fighter where you have a medium light and heavy punch and medium light and heavy kick. You hold back to block. And that's about the extent of the controls. You can do what I refer to as a Hadouken, which is down roll to forward and punch and do various special moves. Like if you played a street fighter, you know what to expect there. Now, this, I, I, it's so easy to do combos in this game. Like you just mash buttons. And I'm sure if I played against someone good, I would get absolutely destroyed. But I look like I know what I'm doing when I'm playing this game right out of the box. Okay. But having said that, uh, th- th- I booted up the game. Um, once it had reached uh, a certain threshold, I was able to play it while it was still downloading, but I could only play uh, me versus the computer, like single player, no story mode or anything like that. Um, and when I was doing that, I was limited to the one free character that I was able to play at the time. But I was, again, just mashing buttons, right? Just doing exactly what said, rolling my face on my controller. Uh-huh. But then once I had finished downloading the game and I started playing the uh, Shadow Lords mode, I think that's what it's called. Something like that. Um, the beginning of it just shows you, tells you how to make these combos work and you have to actually do them in order to progress through that fight. And from then on, I was like, oh, heck, I'm pretty decent at this now. Like I can do these combos without problem now that I know what I'm doing and how to do them properly. So I felt like once I did that, like it was a lot easier to go through. And I kind of rolled through like the uh, story mode for a while before I like hit a roadblock of like fighting somebody, and not not beating them. The story mode is garbage, by the way. Oh, story mode is garbage. But the Shadow Lords mode was actually I, I enjoy the Shadow Lords mode because of the terrible like story that it was trying to tell you. Like the, I don't know if you guys paid attention or played that mode at all, but like, um, I the cuts. Did... I played that mode, oh. and that's what I meant by the story mode is terrible. I it was the best though. 
I loved how terrible and cheesy it was. Like, it was not trying to be cheesy and terrible, but it was. You know how, like, the first Sharknado is great because it doesn't realize what it is? That's Shadow Lord's mode of, of this game. It doesn't realize how garbage it is, and it thinks it's, like, hot hot, hot poop, and it's not. It's absolutely garbage, but it's so funny to play because... Like the story, they he goes, and then he he fought the bad guy, but it found out that the bad guy wasn't really dead at all. He had a different form, and then he got warped through the thing, and da 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 da. Now you have to go find these gems, and you're like, this is so much exposition for just like let me fight the the machine, right? Let me fight the guy. It's, I can't it's worth remember a fighting game, and I love Tekken. Okay, it's my jam. I couldn't tell you anything about the story other than Heihachi tries to kill various members of his own family. Yeah, but, that's one of the biggest things that I have a problem with the newer Soul Calibers is they try to, like, force a story mode on you. And I think, well, because the, um... Uh... I'm not so sure about the new Mortal Kombat games, but the those... Well, guys... The DC, the DC fighting game, what is it called? I'm Injustice. Wondering. Yeah, that story is phenomenal. Both of those, right? And I think right. that so it those, can't be done, right? And the cutscenes are great and everything, but I just don't. But the other thing is they're all voice acted, right? Right. Yeah. And and so it's a lot more cinematic. Whereas when you're playing a fighting game with story mode, it's like read the yeah, and I just I'm not doing it. I seek justice. Uh, there is uh, like some other bars that light up. I don't know what they do. Um, Those are your like ultra special moves that yeah. you can do to increase your combos and make them even stronger. Uh, you could like go into like a shadow mode whenever you are fighting to like. I've I've forgotten what it what all they do. Like I, I played this initially probably like a year ago, um, and that's when I played the Shadow Lords uh, game as well. And actually, this week I only played like one day, but that their server was actually down the entire time I tried to play the Shadow Lords, and I couldn't <laughs> even play that. Of course. So I had to play just the single player, and I didn't really want to play multiplayer because I think last time I played multiplayer, I got destroyed. Yeah, I have no interest in playing multiplayer. Uh, but yeah, but it. Go ahead. Yeah, the but the the bars are pretty much like any other fighting game where. Or like your Marvel vs. Capcom was as soon as you get your bars like filled up, you can do your like ultra special move at the very end of your combo. Yeah, you can go into Saiyan mode, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It's, you know, standard fighting mode or fighting game, you know, other than the fact that you are trying to link as many combos as you can. Basically, every character is Eddie Gordo. That's for Tekken fans. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> But see, I think we're really glossing over the Shadow Lords mode because Go it really ahead. like well, like Have it adds it. it adds more to it, right? Like, I mean, you you pick a group of three fighters and you basically go around the world trying to close these rifts, and you can do some of the fights. You can send like your computer to do the fight. You can like buff and add things like, and, and it's kind of roguelike elements where it's like you get one shot to do it, and you either win or you lose, and then you can reset and do it again. So it adds more replayability, which I know that's not where we're at, but it adds more to it. There's more depth than just like a basic, just like beat 'em up fighter. They try to add more things to it. That again, I didn't think was terrible. Yeah, and I thought I, the story was terrible enough to want to watch it, it because it's so cheesy and bad that it was like amusing to me. So I think for me, the turnoff for me in that mode was just how mobile, free to play, gamey it felt. Yeah, um, yeah, because it, it definitely like walks you through it in the beginning of like do this and now do that and do this and open do this, this pack and do that. Yeah, and there yeah. is definitely that to it. And I and, maybe I only you know glossed over it because I didn't get through you know very far. But you're right. Yeah, yeah. I that I I played a good bit of that mode and it it definitely got to the point where like, well I'll wait for the paywall. <laughs> paywall. Well, let's jump into the paywall then. There are some things. That if you're going to make a free-to-play fighting game, I don't mind if the characters are behind a paywall and you have rotating heroes, sort of like you would in a MOBA. 
and you can gradually earn the currency you want to get whoever. That's fine. I don't like the power-ups that you buy. To There's a thing you can buy which makes sure you can't fail. Right. And I'm like, okay, why play the game? I And, and those things, like, if you're going to monetize a fighting game, I think all you need to do, it, fighters behind the paywall or not, that's fine. But skins? would sell like crazy in a fighting game. You like yeah, they even had skins in this, right? Well, the skins are just like different variations, shapes. like colors and Literally stuff, but you could earn those everything. as you play. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, and so but my thing is is that's I don't you don't need all this other buying gems and stuff. Buy gems to get this to buy that. Uh, uh, that's what I mean yeah. like the the whole mobile free to play game vibe, right? And where you're buying all these currencies to buy all these different things that are kind of who knows what they even do. Where is to me, it, it could be a lot more straightforward and say, here's the currency, a la Fortnite. You can buy like flares, like so there's things in this game, there's all your bars that are on the menu. If you could buy borders for those bars that look awesome and stuff, you can do that. You can buy your character skins, like I said. Do a battle pass. Uh, you know, that's all cosmetics. This game is perfect for flaunting off your cosmetics because you're playing online against other people and you want them to see all your cool stuff. To me, that makes sense. I, I This is where the game really loses it for me because it's a competent fighting game. But I thought so too. I just don't if you're going to do a free to play one I don't understand why you have to make it so mobile like in its currency and in-game economy. Well, they probably weren't making enough money off just the characters. Winter can wreak havoc on your skin. Hey, it's Kayla, and it's not just the weather, but as a new mom, I've seen my skin change in ways that I'm not too happy about. But that's where the Skin Center has you covered. Their most popular treatment is Botox because they're the best at it. They've been ranked a top 10 provider in the nation by Allergan Aesthetics, the makers of Botox. And their best facial is what I got. It's the Hydra Facial. It exfoliates, extracts, and hydrates all at once. So save your skin from these winter blues and DM at the Skin Center MD on Instagram and mention code Kayla to get one hundred dollars off your first botox or filler treatment or any skincare package but you said that the skins aren't anything to really write home about right really no bad. i don't think they were they were just pretty much different colors and like i said you can unlock a lot of them just by playing through the games but they have like characters that i mean again we go back to fortnite and it, this has microsoft behind it and I think maybe it had the game done gangbusters, you could have seen more of this stuff. But like the guy I was playing as initially is like a ninja. They got an ice guy. Yeah. And maybe you license like Mr. Freeze to be the ice guy. I don't know, but like they do in Fortnite where you can play as Batman and Spider Man and Barney. just something and even you don't even need to do that. Just be creative. Make cool stuff that we want to pay for. But no, you buy gems instead. You can also buy like um, bundles. Of, like you can buy like a forty dollars version of this game that has everything unlocked, right? Yeah. So here's the thing that I'm not. To yes, but I believe also if you're a Game Pass member, you pretty much have all the characters at your disposal as long as you're a Game Pass member. Okay. Um, uh, I don't think I have all the characters at my disposal. Yeah, okay. Say, hey, I don't think I did. And then but. I had to I I purchased some of the characters a while back cuz they games of the gold they actually went on sale for a while and they were like a dollar a piece for each character so I bought like 5 or 6 of them at the at the time. But I don't like I don't I didn't have access to all the characters okay. when I was playing this I week. I may be wrong on that, but I know that I had a bunch. Like I had cuz I don't know if you did the a while ago they had the games with gold for this. I'm like, how are you giving away a free oh, yes. game? But I, I, I don't know if that's where I got the unlocks, but... I think so, you because I think they gave away a bunch of characters with the games of gold, like a pack. 
yeah. at one point in time. And I think there was like, I want to say like six or seven characters that came in that one. Yeah, because when I booted up the game this afternoon, I only had one player I could play as. On Game Pass? Like, I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, huh. is this all I have? Because I texted Scott. I was like, do I literally only have this one unlockable character to play? Like the free rotation character right now? If I played like the story mode and stuff like that, you could play as the other characters. But just like me versus the computer, like in a whatever basic match, it was just that character. I could play against all of the characters, but I could only play with the one free to play rotation character. And I was like, oh, this is straight booty. I'm done already. I'm already done. And then I played the other modes and I realized I wasn't quite done, but I was dreaming I was. Replayability. Yeah, I think Shadow Lords adds replayability to the game. You know, if that's what you're into, I, I, like I said, I, I enjoyed it for the I probably put in, you know, honestly, like I don't know, an hour, hour and a half into into that mode today. Yeah. It yeah. Was it was easy to get kind of lost in, like if you didn't have anything else to do. Yeah. I didn't hit a paywall, um, but I also probably didn't give enough time to hit a paywall. Just a few hours. Um, so I'm sure there is a point where you probably hit one, but it's a it's an OK distraction. And I think as a fighting game like think of the fighting games you play what are the things that distracted you from just doing verses you know you get your once you get your unlocks done what is there yeah just verses online yeah yeah i mean tekken ha always had like a what well, we almost like a beat em up mode i hated it though because it played like a fighting game so I mean, like when I'm playing Smash Brothers, whenever the new one comes out, I'm always like, oh, I got to get everybody unlocked, right? Like, yeah. That's my first goal. And then once I beat it, I always, it's like that World of Warcraft star, South Park meme where you're like, what do we do now? And you're like, well, now we can play the game. Yeah. And that's kind of like what it is with Smash Brothers. Uh, I don't, I never felt that draw with this where I'm like, oh man, I want to unlock all these guys so I can like actually play the game now. Like that was never there. Well, and I think, too, is because it doesn't have the same thing of, like, Smash, you can unlock everything just by playing the game. Right. And this is much more, I, I mean, there may be a way to grind to get them, but it is very much going to try to get you to go in the um, pay money direction, you know? Yeah. And I, I don't think there was a way to grind to get any characters, because I played this for a little while back in the day, and there are... The only way I got characters was actually purchasing them. Huh. No, I unlocked Jogan almost immediately after I started the Shadow Lords, and then I unlocked the girl, his sister, um, very quickly too. Oh, okay. So, so you, you can unlock, unlock some. some of them. Yeah. So I had by the end, I had unlocked I think three or four people. So I think I had five playable characters by the end. If I'm not the mistaken. girl, his sister is super powerful. That was a bad joke. I guess I ended the podcast. Good I, God. It's it's good because, like, I, I know Scott won't laugh because, like, no humor. So I, I just leave a needle out like that's kind of funny. No, it's fine. I don't mind it because, listen, what a pet peeve of mine is when someone says a joke and they're like, come on, man, that was funny. Nah, if it was funny, I'd have laughed. So here I am making a joke. It did not land. That's cool. No problem. That's okay. Generally, your jokes are good. Oh, thank you, Scott. Oh, don't give up that much. I love credit. being patronized. I said generally. I mean, he's no Elliot. Yeah. Uh, no, wow, that hurt. Yeah, <laughs> I, feel, I feel a little insulted for you. That Ew. stung. I'm like bottom tier co-host, man. Oh, it, oh, I know what I need to do to be Elliot. I quit. <laughs> no, don't tempt him with a good time. You can't because the first thing Scott will do is like, "Hey, Ella, you want to come back full time?" And I'll like be like, yeah, "You'll be like, yeah, or, yeah." Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, nah, I'm gonna pull Eric in if that's the case. Mm. Good luck. Yeah, yeah, he probably wouldn't. <laughs> Judgment. At the end of each episode, we decide whether or not the game deserves our seal and needs a two third vote to be approved or denied. Jeff, what do you say? No. Uh, I, while I haven't played it specifically, the game that is this week's game, that's what it means. Yeah, that's what I mean. I watch YouTube per Mark, uh, but the, um, there's a dead or alive free to play. I don't know that free to, 
Look, let's just go buy Smash. Wow. Leave me alone. Wow. I don't know why it's, it's this game. Single one of them. Uh, <laughs> no, doing it again. Uh, what are you saying? What'd you say to me? Before you, just think before you're going to say your sentence. Cause you Excuse me? Okay. You heard me. Oh, Elliot, you tempt <laughs> me sometimes, dude. I'm not going to do it. That's right. You're a guest here. Um, <laughs> 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 <sighs> 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 I'm a better person. I'm a better person. You are. Uh, this is uh, not a fun game. And hmm. I don't like it. All right, Elliot, how about yourself? I'm going to say yes. I don't think it's not a fun game. I don't, I'm not like this is the best, but I, I think it's very suitable for free to play. Uh, I think the paywall wise, I think it's pretty decent. I, I don't think you're going to pay. It's not a lot of pay to win. It doesn't feel like that. I never felt like I hit a paywall. I enjoyed my time with the Shadow Lords mode. Like I said, I think the story alone is worth playing for like an hour because it's just so stupid and funny, like, I literally laughed out loud because of, like, the dialogue, because it's just kind of, you know, funny. Um, I, I thought the combo stuff was kind of cool. I enjoyed that. Like, once you learn what you're doing, it's kind of fun to, like, throw your sword every single time or shoot the ball out or, or whatever it is. Um, so I, I don't think it's, you know, a huge waste of time for downloading 42 gigs, even though that is quite a big pile. Um, but I think there's a lot of content here to see um, at the free price. I think... This is a better free to play game than uh, a lot of the stuff that you know you guys m end up playing. So, tell me. <laughs> um, I enjoy the game. It's definitely polished. It's no Mortal Kombat, but it does have that sort of feel to it. Um, I wouldn't you know rank it with other like you guys are saying Smash, and but I'm mean, it's not the same type of fighting game as Smash Brothers. Smash is on its own. What do they don't they call it like arena battler or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that's yeah, just what we're most Brawl Hall is yeah. like the the closest to Smash that I would say. Yeah, or Nickelodeon All Stars. Yeah, yeah, there's others out there. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. But yeah, as far as like you know the side scrolling uh, fighting games, this is you know pretty close to the Mortal Kombat style and all the other ones that we're used to. And as a free to play one, it's actually I would say top tier. As far as the free to play ones, you were talking about another one, Jeff. Uh, Dead or Alive. I have not played the that one. Yeah, like the most recent Dead or Alive. Be now that's a game that will benefit from uh, monetizing skins <laughs> more so <laughs> than any fighting game at uh, any time. Teenage Elliot loved that game. All I all right. Teenage Elliot bought all of them. Elliot them. loves that game. Teenage Elliot probably oh, loved the I volleyball game, right, guys? Teenage Elliot bought it day one. I'm not even joking. Okay. Not Here's even a story for you. My brother had brought over a modded Xbox, OG Xbox. Yeah, those were the best, man. And we were like, oh, cool. So, you know, I messed around with it a bit. And my sister and I always kind of memed on the volleyball game, right? It, uh, <laughs> it's funny, you know, it's like, yeah. hey, it's on there. Let's just play it as a gag. Yeah, we loaded it up, game. and it's modded oh, with the nude mod. Yeah, it is. All, All right. the characters Jeffrey were score. naked. <laughs> with your sister. Awesome. <laughs> My sister was like, I can't believe how graphic this is. I'm like, turn it off. Turn it off. <laughs> oh, that's so good. How old were, uh, your how poor old sister. were you guys at the time? That's I fantastic. would have been in my early 20s. She would have been te early teens. Okay. So it's just a really comical. appropriately unsettling. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just enough to be like, please, let's not talk about this ever again. Yep. Yeah. But we both right, remember so... it at Thanksgiving dinner. We're both looking at each other. And it's like <laughs> yeah. a me. And there's that sparkle. And you're like, oh, man, not again. <laughs> so anyways, this will get my seal. So this is budget ah, arcade approved. Good. I'm glad I could be here to make sure that I don't happens. know why like you and Mark, anytime I disagree and it still gives a seal, it's like suck it, Jeff. I don't I didn't care. Say suck it. There's no suck it. Okay. Well, even Mark gave it a seal. Yeah. I wish Mark. And the best here. part is I get a vote this week on who's if it's gonna get its seal or not, since I'm already on the episode. I gotta do that. Oh gosh. <laughs> I better go and see who uh, voted already. Um, yeah, so Mark, he said, the game is fun and over the top, as I haven't played a Killer Instinct game since probably the N64, so it was weird, but I dug it. I don't know if it was me or I need to play it longer, but I was there 
was I think he said I I think he meant I wish there were more f- characters to choose it, from free. It. No, no, read it how I wrote it. That's how he said. Oh, read it. Okay, how he wrote it was uh I don't know if it was me or I need to play it longer, but I was there was more characters yeah. to choose from free. Me like it gets my seal but barely. LOL. <laughs> me like you good game. <laughs> me like you good game. Nice. That's going to be me from here on out. <laughs> yeah. So our next game is going to be a little bit different. We are going to change up the format oh, just so a little excited. bit. I'm so excited. Is this uh, what I think it is? Taking my shirt off. And so uh, we are going to be still doing free-to-play games, but not as often. Taking my shirt off. Uh, we are going to start so pulling good. in some indie games. Indie developers are going to be giving us codes to review some of their games. And our first game is going to be Vagante. Uh, oh. Taking my shirt off. Oh, you should have me on for that one. I played. I played that too. Uh removing no, my shirt. The the ne- the next game will be uh, the one you're thinking of, Elliot. Oh, okay. Now well, I played. I've, I played both of the next two games you guys are playing. So I've said this. I'll tell people what's actually going on. Mark and I are sick of this free to play garbage. Um, We're sick of that's it. That's weird. So we. Pe- well, we did what you didn't do. We said our thoughts out loud. You ran. Oh, no, I mean, you ran. This is boring. I can't do boring anymore. Yeah. yeah. And we said, Scott, let's mix it up a little. Let's do. I can't they do revolted. another Battle Royale, bro. I just can't. I can't do. I, I hate explaining how a circle shrinks and you guys fight to the last person. I've done that so many times. I don't want to do it anymore. And uh, and so. Indie games, I love them anyway. I'm playing them already, so I'm excited. I already own Vagante. Oh yeah, have you played a lot of it, bro? I'm the roguelike guy, man. I, look, I, know I you got are. this in early access, bro. I've had it for years. Yeah, so it's something. yeah, it's hard. Vagante is very difficult. Yes, it is the roguelike. Action roguelike for people who wish that roguelikes were as hard as Brogue and NetHack. Because it's, it's, it's a blast brutal. For people, though. We were playing, I think there was four of us playing. It's it's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, the multiplayer is off the charts. Yeah. So. But okay. anyways, Elliot, want to tell them where they oh. can find you? Yeah, so a- again, thanks for having me on. It's always fun, and I love catching up with you guys because I feel like I don't talk to you as often. Although that's not true because Scott texts me all the time. It's kind of annoying a little bit. Anyway, uh, especially at 6 in the morning, right? I did that out. Uh, So you can listen to my podcast I do with my wife, Tessa and Elliot argue uh, every episode or new episodes out on Sundays. Um, You can see me write or you can read what I write at GamingNexus.com. I love watching him write. And you can see people steal what he writes on on Steam. Steam. Yeah, that's right. You can find uh, people steal my thoughts on Steam, which is again I find flattering because I think I was I, so happy for you, uh, dude. I everyone was like, "Oh, that sucks." I'm like, actually, I think it's kind of cool that someone's like, "Oh, I stole what you, I took what you wrote because I thought it was like worthy enough to like copy." I was like, "Oh," or it's just like just terrible enough that it's not super professional. Or anyway, no, uh, so, yeah, you can't he, have like you said that imposter syndrome. Yeah, I did it writing. That all, all right, all so the shut time. the. Uh, so gamingnexus.com, you can see news and reviews there. And I think I think starting Monday, I can announce it. So this comes out on Tuesday, but I will be writing at App Trigger, which is a site for the fansighted.com um, series of uh, web pages. So I'm going to be writing there uh, as a contributor for uh, some game stuff. And then I'm spawning off to doing some sports stuff too, but that's not super set in stone yet, so I can't really announce that yet. But so what is the stuff you'll be writing for this new website? Uh, it's mostly think pieces, uh, so it'll be mostly editorial kind of stuff, like what I think about with game-related stuff, and there'll still be oh, some okay. news and reviews too, but um, they literally want me for like what I want to, like for what I think, so it's kind of cool in that sense, and then other stuff in the works with them, I think, So, but I'll announce that. Don't they know they can just copy and paste it from the GamingNexus.com? I, I said, just copy. Control just C. Crack. Exactly. That's what I do. So... Um, so there you go. So yeah. Um, and then again, I'm on Twitter, Elliot underscore argues. So check me out there too and steal some of my tweets. I'm going to listen. You all know Elliot. He's great. Unironically. I like podcasting with the guy. That being said, 
if you want to get in touch with us, you can do so at Twitter and Instagram at Budget Arcade. TikTok and Twitch are at Budget Arcade Podcast. Uh, we have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash Budget Arcade. And don't forget to check out our website, budgetarcade.com, where we yeah. update it daily, occasionally. Month, every other month. That's Once maybe. in a Quarterly. while. Once in a while. It gets updated. I try to throw up something I think there, I should on stop there saying once in a while. It, really? I mean. No, we still get a fair amount of traffic to it. <laughs> yeah. Why stop now? If you want to help support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash budget arcade. For being a Patreon subscriber, you will get access to our Patreon channel in our Discord. You can join our Discord through any of our show notes, links, or as well on our social medias. Our music is provided by Stimage, and you can download his music at metroidmetal.com. If you want to purchase one of our t-shirts, you can do so at the link in our show notes as well. You can get the one I'm wearing right now. And you he really hasn't watched it. You podcast? Oh my god! No, that's super. No, I'm saying this li- literally. Oh. This shirt right here. Yeah, it's an right. old navy. It's all. I thought you blue. took off the shirt. Oh, it yeah. smells. I thought your hairy chest and. It smells like smoke because I did. Nipples. I barbecued. It smells good. No, I usually do podcast without my shirt on, but it's uh, winter in Florida, so it's not too bad. <laughs> Yeah, winter in Florida. <laughs> Quote unquote yeah. winter in Florida. Oh yeah. My gosh. It's in the 80s. That's right. <laughs> All right. And get- Game on.